Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here, and there's a proposal for a new tax in Canada that some people think could solve the housing affordability issue. And that housing affordability issue is a big problem in Canada, with prices on average going up around 20% everywhere across Canada. But there are some big problems with this tax that might actually make things a whole heck of a lot worse. So in today's video, we're going to go over exactly how this new tax works, and who could end up paying for it, and whether or not it will actually work, but before we do, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and check out all the links in the description whenever you click on those and use them. It directly supports this channel, so I appreciate it when you do that. All right, so taxes are used to either incentivize or disincentivize people from doing different things. Want people to smoke less? Well, put a higher tax on their cigarettes. Want people to drive more environmentally friendly vehicles? Okay, reduce the tax on electric vehicles. It's a way for the government to get you to do what it wants you to do uh, by pulling the strings of your pocketbook. And the same goes for real estate and housing in Canada. And there's a research group called Generation Squeeze that has proposed a brand new tax that they think could change the behavior of Canadians to allow for houses to become more affordable. The tax is on homes worth $1 million or more, and it's charged every single year. Now, the rate that it's charged and the rate that they're taxed at is at is the lowest rate, a 0.2% tax, and at the highest rate, a 1% tax every single year. But this is a progressive tax rate system, which makes the numbers a little bit funky. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The tax is actually only on the value of the home over a million dollars. So if you had a $1 million home, well, you'd essentially be paying zero in tax. However, if you had a $1.1 million home, you would be taxed on the one. So at the lowest rate of 0.2% charged annually for a home that only is $100,000 over a million, well, those people would only end up paying $200 per year in additional taxes. Now, this amount would scale up as we go higher and higher and the 0.2% uh, raises up to 1%, so you'd see substantially more taxes on a $3 million home versus a $1.1 million home, and that rate would scale up proportionally to the value of the home. And the organization that's actually proposing this tax, well, they put out a detailed chart on how this would actually affect homeowners. If you had a home within the one to 1.5 million range, you'd be paying around $400 a year. 1.5 to two would be $2,000 a year, and two million plus on average would be $14,710 per year. And they've actually also listed the amount of revenue that the government could generate by proposing this tax or putting this tax into place in the right-hand column here with $350 50 million dollars for the first tier here, another 580 million dollars here in the second tier, and in the final tier, 3.62 billion dollars in revenue, adding up to a total of 4.54 billion dollars per year in revenue that the government could grab from homeowners. So, okay, awesome, that's an additional $5 billion a year that could be put to use towards making more affordable housing. But there are some major problems here. The first thing that you might wonder is whether or not the government would actually be able to put to use this $5 billion and make actual effective progress in terms of lowering the cost of housing for the average Canadian. Uh, this is especially interesting when you take a look at this. Now, you may be familiar that the government is already throwing boatloads of money at this problem with something called the National Housing Strategy. And right here, we can get the stats here that over 10 years, the National Stra Housing Strategy is already putting $72 billion in place over 10 years. And that sort of roughly uh, factors out to $7.2 billion per year to solve this problem. And uh, this started back in 2017. So my question to you is, have you really seen all that much effective growth or, or progress towards solutions for this problem with the already $7.2 billion that the government's been spending every single year? Uh, since 2017. It makes you wonder just how effectively the government can even control this problem if they're already throwing that much money at it and we're not seeing the kind of outcomes that we'd expect from throwing that amount of money at the problem. Uh, the other thing that you need to consider is that housing in most cases is a provincial and municipal or provinces individually in the individual cities. It's their job to manage that. So even if they wanted to implement this across Canada, they'd have to get buy-in from every single individual provincial and municipal government to actually roll out this additional funding to build new housing. 
And that's not even mentioning the fact that most places in Canada don't have home values over a million dollars. When we're looking at Vancouver and Toronto, well, certainly there's a lot of homes that fit that criteria, but would other provinces sign on if their average home price isn't even close to the point where this tax would actually start taking uh, effect? And would people who are in Toronto and Vancouver be okay footing the bill and paying up all this money that could be doled out to the other provinces? You can see how it gets a little complex here. The second challenge that I see here is getting the actual value of the home that the provinces would be trying to tax here. Uh, you, there's essentially two ways. The first way is to get an appraisal, which is costly. You have to get an appraiser out and they have to look at all the market comparables around you to figure out what the fair market value is for your home. Now that's quite expensive if they're trying to do that on every single home. The second way that they could do it is to use the provincial assessments. Now, at least here in Ontario, every single home, uh, their municipality and the province sort of work together to get a value of the home that they use for property taxes to determine how much each individual home needs to pay. Now the problem with these assessments is that they only happen every four or five years and as a result for the vast majority of the time, again at least in Ontario, these assessments are far lower than the actual value of the home. So there could be tons of million dollar plus homes that aren't getting taxed at all because their assessment is far lower than that. And as a third potential issue, I wonder if this kind of tax would actually create more affordable housing for most Canadians. Well, sure, if the money is actually managed well by the government, it could create more affordable housing. But think, let's think of this from a broader market perspective uh, when we take into consider supply and demand, essentially the two things that will change the value of a home. If there's more supply and not enough demand, home prices go down. If there's too many people or too much demand that want homes and there's not enough supply, enough people selling, well, that is what causes skyrocketing home prices. And that's why this one little footnote on the policy has me concerned. They say that though the tax would be calculated annually, it would be deferred until the home is sold, so it would function similar to a land transfer tax that many provinces and municipalities already levy. Essentially what they're saying here is that you wouldn't actually have to pay this tax every single year. You would only have to pay the tax for every single year that you've had it at the time that you sell the house. Now selling a house is already a very expensive thing to do when you consider all of the lawyer fees and realtor fees and all of the uh, land transfer taxes. But if we add even more funds on top of this that a prospective seller would have to pay in order to get rid of their home and to sell it, well, that would disincentivize them from selling. You may have far more people who just opt to keep the home and maybe take out a home equity line of credit to access the funds that are locked inside of the home's equity instead of selling it. So uh, if we have more people not selling their homes in the same amount of demand, well, a policy like this could actually drive prices even higher than they are right now. Those are just a few things to consider that may make a tax like this far less effective. But in the grand scheme of things, I think that there's only really two things that can be done that can really make an impact on housing prices in Canada, and as a result, housing affordability for Canadians. The first thing that we could do is create more homes, build more homes. Increasing the supply with the same amount of demand would slow down home price increases. But this is a lot harder than it sounds. Because housing is mostly governed by individual towns and municipalities, and then more broadly by provinces, we couldn't just create some sort of national strategy and national plan that we could lay a blanket over the entire country to solve this issue. It would have to be far more targeted. And on top of that, there is even more roadblocks with something called nimbyism or not in my backyardism. Essentially, whenever people in a community see that there's more houses being built or more dense houses like uh, apartment buildings being built, well, most of the time, those individual communities will push back on these decisions being made because more people living in the same community means maybe longer lines at the grocery store or potentially the, the destruction of some forest land or green space that they previously had in order to build these houses. Uh, so it makes it very, very difficult to get a community on board to build more housing and to bring more people into their already pre-existing community. And the second thing that could actually impact home prices was actually mentioned in the very same report that this new tax was proposed in, but it's getting far less press, and that's actually to change monetary policy. Now, when I say monetary policy, people's eyes glaze over, but it's very simple and, uh, and uh, intuitive to understand here. They say that they want an annual study reporting on the latest evidence about the relationship between monetary policy and the growing gap between home prices and earnings, saying that monetary policy used to stay 
stimulate the economy generally may be unintentionally inflicting collateral damage on housing affordability. Let me break this down for you. When they talk about monetary policy, for now we could just think of that as the Bank of Canada changing the interest rates that people pay. Uh, now this has a large impact on the housing market. When we have lower interest rates, people can get mortgages with also lower interest rates, and as a result, they can afford more home with less money because the payments they have to make are far lower than if interest rates were higher. Now because people are able to get more mortgages for more amounts of money, that increases the demand for housing while the supply stays the same and obviously that equation leads to rising housing prices. Now since the beginning of the pandemic, the Bank of Canada has been manipulating interest rates to make them super super low. In their eyes, having a lower interest rate helps to stimulate the economy because if we have a lower interest rate, people are incentivized to borrow a lot more money and to spend it on more things and that money will roll back into the economy. Uh, it also incentivizes businesses to expand more quickly and could potentially help employment numbers because if businesses take out cheaper business loans, they're able to pay more people and have more people employed under their business. So we chose to stimulate the economy and to prop up employment rates all by lowering interest rates, but uh, the result of that and the consequence of that are these runaway housing prices because the same things that will stimulate the economy will also stimulate a larger pool of buyers for housing. And that's not even to mention that the way the Bank of Canada lowers these interest rates is by purchasing huge amounts of Government of Canada bonds. Now, when they increase the demand for these bonds, the interest rate on those bonds go down, and that sort of broadly affects the interest rates that are charged in the broader market. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that the Bank of Canada, well, they didn't actually have any money to purchase these bonds with. Instead, they created brand new money, printed brand new money, in order to uh, have the funds to buy the these bonds to lower the rates. Now, that additional money makes its way into the system and ends up in the hands of large banks, and they're incentivized to more readily lend out that money to consumers. So we have more money in the system and more demand for housing as a result of that. Again, another thing that's contributing to these rising prices. You might remember that we were in a similar housing situation in 2017 with rapidly increasing housing prices, but we were able to get ourselves out of it and slow down that rate of of growth, and this is how we did it. The Bank of Canada began to hike interest rates, again, that will reduce the amount of demand for housing because people can afford less house with their current income. Uh, provinces also implemented a tax on non-resident buyers. We're seeing a little bit of that happening now with new taxes being brought in by different provinces, and OSFI tightened qualification rules in a meaningful way. All that means is that people were able to qualify for less mortgage, and as a result, again, less demand, same supply, means that housing prices slow down. So those are some of the things that I think we should actually be looking at if we truly want to lower the rate of growth for Canadian house prices. But even if this new tax that was proposed were to actually be considered, well, I think that that's not entirely likely with this Liberal government because here's a statement from them just this week after this report came out. They said in a statement to the Canadian press that the government made it clear that it still has no appetite for any new taxes on owners and that the federal government has clearly stated several times that we will not be introducing a tax on the equity of primary residences in Canada. Uh, and that's exactly what this new tax is. So it's clear that at least uh, as it stands right now, the Liberal government and Justin Trudeau won't even consider bringing in this new tax that we've talked about today. And obviously it's a complex situation and there are going to be lots of different opinions on it. And I want to hear from you what you think about all of this. Do you think that this tax that's being proposed is actually the right way forward? Or is there something different that you think could actually help the problem? Because clearly we have a problem on our hands. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and check out all of those links in the description. Uh, you can open up investment accounts, open up cryptocurrency accounts, and even learn more about building wealth in Canada with any of those links. And when you use them, it directly supports the channel. So I appreciate that. But with all of that said, thanks so much for watching everybody. I really hope this video has helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.